What up, everybody? Brickley's here, coming out to another review. This is on the ATST Walker. 449 pieces. Let's get right into the features. First off, I just want to acknowledge that um, I can't fit it all into uh, one, uh, like, all into frame at once. So I'm just going to show you here uh, just a view up and down of it. So there's the legs there. I can't really show you that all in one frame with the head. So there's that. So first off, I'm going to start on the feet here. And as you can see, um, they use a lot of tiles and such for the legs. Uh, just to cover up all the Technic beams and stuff. But you can see the feet. They're very well detailed. They have large stickers. Um, they're actually pretty uh, small, I guess. Usually with the walkers, their feet have to be quite big compared to the rest of them. Um, just to be able to hold up the mass of the top because uh, sometimes the legs aren't as uh, well put together now they call this the chicken walker for a reason and that is because the legs are really skinny and the feet are just like used, they're like pretty much flat you know uh, so they call it the chicken walker that's its kind of nickname I'll show you the rest of the legs right now here you can see with the legs uh, from a side view they're pretty thin actually as you can see there um, just over here there's uh, these kind of ball jointed uh, actual pieces and those are supposed to represent um, uh, I guess kind of cables maybe just as uh, just to move the ankles here you can see how those are connected they're connected to these beams that lead onto the feet moving up the legs you can see they use uh, these really uh, tough joint pieces they use two on each leg these large ones here and then you can see that uh, these kind of gears right here uh, the I guess hip joints they don't actually move at all they're actually fixed to not move here's a look at those uh, joints so as you can see they have a lot of snap to them and they take a quite a bit of muscle to uh, move now you can see that the the feet actually do not move at all. Well, there's a bit of you know looseness in there, but you can't really move them. Uh, so there's no really good walking pose with this thing. Now again, they used a lot of tiles up here at the uh, kind of body piece, the part that connects the neck and the legs. So you can use tile. They use tiles there, and just a lot of smooth parts. Now right here, you can see this two by two uh, round. Uh, uh, piece just a block with a axle in it and when you turn that it actually turns the whole head of the ATST walker so you can actually turn it 160 degrees but my fingers kind of get in the way there you can see that and also while we're looking at the back here you can see there's these two uh, cone pieces and you can actually move those you know uh, that is actually how you activate the spring-loaded shooters. So usually you'd have a, a spring-loaded shooter in there and it'd be like this. And then when you press that in, it actually shoots it off. There you can see the red spring-loaded uh, spring shooter there. And when I press on the back here, you'll see it shoot off. There you go. So that, that just pushes that in. Now let's look at the weapons. Over here on the side, you can see we have a anti-artillery cannon, which has a, a shield plate on the side of it, and that rotates 100, uh, 160 degrees or 360 degrees. Sorry. Then up at the front, you can see the um, ground cannon, uh, just in the center there. And then off to the other side, you can see the concussion grenade launcher, and that's actually really cool that they. Uh, the ball joint piece they use for that, showing the barrel of that. And they're connected by uh, the, these hammer pieces, these black hammer pieces. You can even turn them from here, so you don't even have to have your fingers on them. So that's actually very nice. Now, looking at the face of it, you can see uh, they got the very nice angles here. The, the side panels have nice angles to them, and I'll show you that when we look at the inside. And they have the deflector shields. Um, on the top of it there so there that is you can see the deflectors that actually uh, they never show it but they're supposed to close up I'm pretty sure 
uh, just like that in case there's any um, any heavy fire. Uh, but other than that, you can just see it there from the front, uh, the top hatch as well. So you open that up, it just hinges open. And you can actually hear, uh, you can actually put your ATSD pilot in there. So I put him in. So you can just sit him right in there and he just stands there. You can put a blaster in his hand. And if you have Chewbacca, you can recreate the scene from Return of the Jedi where Chewbacca uh, uh, sits in there and looks out the top of it. Now if we take him out, you can also see there, uh, when we close it back up, that the whole top hinges open. That's how we'll look at the inside right now. Now looking at it from the inside, you can see there's a um, thermal detonator there, and there's also a jumper piece there where you can put his... Uh, uh, the ATSD pilot's blaster. You can see they use this uh, Lego Friends uh, foot grip piece there. So you can put that in there, and there's also that control panel. I'll put the ATSD pilot in there now. So there he is there. Now it is quite um, off scale because there is supposed to be two seats, uh, but there's only one in this model, but that's okay. If you have enough light, if you open the hatch, you can see the pilot in there through one of the. Uh, the kind of eye shaped windows. That's all for the ATSD. Let's get right onto the minifigures. First minifigure we have here is the ATSD pilot. Um, first off, I just want to tell you that the helmet is supposed to have uh, printed goggles on there, but I lost that piece, so uh, I just put the older version's helmet on there. Same piece, just the newer one that actually comes with the set has a print on it. You can see that from various pictures of the set. Anyways, he just has a short pat, uh, blaster there uh, in case he, like, you know, you put him in the top hatch uh, in case he has to manually shoot people. Uh, as you can see there, his torso print is very nice. Uh, it's got some of that uh, kind of jumpsuit look, kind of skydiving suit look. You can see his face print there. He looks very serious with his goggles on and a chin strap. You can see his second sided face. Also, there's his back printing. The second minifig we've got here is the uh, Rebel Trooper. He's just, he has no name, just Rebel Trooper. As you can see here, uh, he's got this brand new helmet. It's gunmetal gray helmet. Um, kind of just like uh, an old, uh, uh, just like a hand to hand combat uh, helmet. So you can tell that he's not going to be like in a ship or anything, he's going to be on the grounds. No double sided face with him, but you can't see his back printing there. It's pretty nice. Can't really see it, but uh, there is some leg printing there. It's uh, they use the dark brown color, so it is kind of hard to see against the regular brown. But you can see he has a belt there printed on the, uh, the T piece that connects the that connects the legs to the body. The last minifigure we have is Baze Malbus, and Baze is from Rogue One. He's actually one of the uh, temp the Jedi Temple on Jeddah. He's one of the um, what do you call it? Like kind of like the Temple guards. He's He's uh, on Jeddah, the plateau of Jeddah. He is, uh, what are they? I don't know what they call them. They're, they're pretty much guardians, him and Shirut Inoue. Uh, they're the last ones there. So he join, he joins Rogue One, but I won't spoil it for you. Uh, I'll have to let you see the movie. Anyways, he comes with this big brooding, uh, like, hand, it's, it's a handheld gun, but it's, it looks, like, chunky enough to, to have to have like a stand on it but anyways on the side of it there's a, a chain that's just supposed to represent um, kind of like a bandolier of ammo uh, that goes into a backpack thing he has here uh, uses red pieces I actually like how it's red I'm glad they didn't just make it like brown but that wasn't even Lego's choice that was the designers of the movie so anyways you can actually um, I'm not sure hold on so he can actually uh, have his gun stand or uh, lifted because his backpack kind of uh, counter lifts the weight. Usually, if they didn't have the backpack, he'd just be falling over. You can see there's a red um, a one by one plate on the side of the gun, and there's also a black roller skate piece on top of the gun there. 
Now let's focus on his face. I'll take that um, other stuff off. So there's his front uh, printing, and as you can see, it's actually very nice. It kind of kind of looks like he pasted on some armor. Like it's not really a uh, like he just made that suit himself. He's got a red arm there representing more armor. And then on the back, he's got this uh, one by two clear uh, brace piece that goes around the neck part of the minifigure body, and that just connects his backpack. Uh, nothing to see under there, but you can see the back printing there um, below that, just showing some more kind of technical metal stuff. And here I'll let you see his double sided face. So there that is, that's when he's angry. So that's all for this review. Hope you enjoyed this Brick Beast review. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe.